Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. It has become increasingly clear over the last few days that Christian Horner is unlikely to survive the week as Red Bull's team principal, but the question has been exactly why and how has this even happened in the first place? These reports, let's not forget, first emerged in the Dutch media a few days ago, and apparently that is no coincidence. New rumours emerging that the reason behind all of this drama is the badly battered and broken relationship between Jos Verstappen, Max's father, and team principal Christian Horner. Max Verstappen, lots of power in the team at the moment, is more loyal to Helmut Marko, and to his father than he is to Christian Horner and that is the basis of all this drama very much on Twitter your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always I would greatly appreciate it firstly though we've got to mention the Alpine disaster class of a livery they actually teased as you guys can see right here like a camo pink livery people were getting kind of excited then they launched this firstly which is the WEC car which is actually straight fire I don't understand why the Formula 1 model is so restrictive unless we're talking about weight saving which I think we are We'll discuss that in a second. But this livery is really nice. And as you guys can see, that the brake lights here. I mean, have a look at this. They've got the Alpine logo. It's fantastic stuff. The people that are designing these cars are talented. They're more talented, I think, than they get to display because this is the new Alpine. And it was honestly such an embarrassing and hilarious launch because they launched this car and then they were like, oh, wow, it's fantastic. But actually, we have another car because they have the pink version, obviously, that they're going to run for eight of the 24 races. But the liveries might as well be the same because they do all this grand review reveal on this livery at the top here. This is compared to last year's one, by the way, and last year's I didn't think was great, but it looks so much better than what they've got this year with all the carbon fiber. We'll get to that in a second. But then they say, oh, actually, no, guys, we've got the pink livery. It's going to be great. Let's have a look at this. And they reveal basically the same livery, but with pink on it instead of blue and still not that much pink. So it's been a massive trend of the last few years of these cars moving towards just carbon fiber, right? I mean, Honestly, if you look at the steak livery, you look at the um, the Williams livery, and even look at the Haas livery, they're quite similar to this in many respects, with a lot of the nose is just carbon fiber, some paint here and there, but not massive amounts of it. And it's been a big trend away from great liveries such as the Alpine from 21, right, a couple of years ago. And I know that there was lots of images such as this circling around from what's got to be 2018, I'm guessing here with, you know, the Mercedes with the Aqua on it and the silver and the Ferrari and the you know, I mean, look how good this looks. The Renaults, of course, as they used to be before, they're now these awful pink Alpines, as far as I'm concerned. And every car is distinct. Every car has its own personality, in some respects, at least. Sponsors, you know, you look back on these seasons, you remember the cars. These cars nowadays, I don't know if there's any real identity for these cars and teams. And, you know, a livery like this is not going to be remembered in years to come. I mean, it's just so dull. And it's going to look so similar to so many other cars as well. It's been a big trend away from liveries such as this and towards liveries. I'm pretty sure Matty Gallagher put this on Twitter, actually, of what the liveries are going to look like for the upcoming season. But yeah, it's been a big trend towards black and white cars, pure carbon fiber. And there's been a big question as to whether there really needs to be some sort of change, even maybe from the FIA side, on preventing this from being the case. Maybe there should be a rule that 80% of your car, 60%, 70% has to be painted because right now it's a race to the bottom. The funny thing as well is the teams last year with the most paint, which is Ferrari and pretty much Red Bull. I mean, Red Bull, they do, to be fair, leave some of their car carbon, but they do at least have a fair bit of paint on it compared to some of these other teams. And I guess these other teams think, well, you know, our car isn't great. We've got to try and find a way to catch up. Like, let's just cut low to the paint off, as you guys can see in this example, because it is an easy way to gain some performance. Williams have done it. The other teams in this ballpark have done it. Even the McLaren could look way sexier, I think, than it does if there was more papaya, but they want to have some exposed carbon. Mercedes, I'm sure, will stay pretty much black with lots of carbon, and that's probably going to look kind of good when it's all black, but I think when you get these cars that are like half black and, you know, a lot of them are going to be very easily confused with the Mercedes in certain circumstances, I don't think it's a great idea. I think arguably there should be some sort of regulatory change because, you know, these regulations haven't really worked as intended, and we now get incredibly boring cars all the time. Not really sure that's a recipe for success. And as I say, race to the bottom. Like, you know, teams start to do this next year. If nothing changes, teams are just going to go one step further, right? They're going to be like, well, we could remove the paint here. We could remove the paint there. And it's just a black carbon car with some stickers on. And I don't think we want that to be the future of the sport, to be honest. Now, speaking of stake, there were lots of talk about potential legal action after the fact that their title sponsor stake do not have a license to operate their casinos and stuff in Switzerland. 
So the brand is therefore not allowed to be advertised in the country. And it was actually spotted briefly today that their logo had been removed from the website. Now decal spotters clarified and that actually that was just kind of part of um, routine work at Sauber rather than anything special. And apparently it's not going to be that much of a big deal. And I can't imagine that Sauber wouldn't have thought about this because they're a Swiss company based in Switzerland. Steak doesn't have a license in Switzerland. They surely must have thought, okay, is this actually going to work? And well, it might not work, but they might have realized that they can probably get around it relatively easily. So apparently the Federal Casino Commission is understood to have opened proceedings against Sauber, but apparently they're going to be fines what, 500,000 Swiss francs, which ain't really that much, is it? So I'm sure that's not going to be too much of a big deal compared to what they're getting from stake. So it might just end up being a cost of doing business here really for Sauber going forward until, of course, Audi take over in a couple of years' time. There was also this link to the new racing balls, as I'm going to call them from now on, race suit that has apparently been leaked. So here's Danny Rick in this race suit, and people have therefore come up with their renders of what it might potentially look like. So I think, honestly, in terms of liveries, we are really waiting on for Ferrari and probably racing bulls because they might actually have something pretty good. There's rumors that it's going to be like silver and blue and stuff like this. So I think those are the two cars that I'm hoping actually do something because so far this year the liveries have not set the world on fire. But that's not a bad racing suit to be perfectly honest. But we've got to dive back into Ricardo's, well one of his top supporters in the sport in Christian Horner might potentially be gone. And that's one of the other stories in the aftermath of all of this stuff that if Horner does go, what does it mean for Danny Rick? Because you know, Horner loves Ricardo. Yuki Tsunoda is probably the preference of Marco, you could argue, and it looks like Marco is going to stay and Horda might potentially go. Lots has happened over the last few weeks and months, really, as you might be aware. February 2024 has been an absolute madness and we're barely a week into it. If you guys have been living under a rock, Christian Horner is being investigated by Red Bull for what is believed to be controlling or inappropriate behavior against an employee. There's apparently a dossier of information. There's been various rumors as to exactly how this is manifested and exactly what Horner did. This is kind of the latest that I've seen on it here from Metro today actually that say the following. So this is just the breakdown of what's happened over the last few days. Red Bull has launched an investigation into team principal Horner after a a female employee made a complaint about the Formula One star. Horner, husband, of course, they open to mention Jerry Halliwell, as they always do. I completely deny these claims. And um, as they then go on to say, they concern his strict and controlling work regime. It is said that Horner had concerns about her, a female employee's conduct, and made it clear that he was unhappy before she then went on to make a complaint about his controlling behavior. So I'm not really sure we've seen those quotes before. So I thought it was definitely worth mentioning as to exactly what might be going on. Now, whether Horner is found guilty or not, that's a question for Red Bull and this kind of external investigator to decide. But whatever the case is, the relationships internally at Red Bull seem to basically be fried. And we'll see that in a second. Like, even if Horner's innocent and he's done nothing wrong at all, it doesn't feel like this is a tenable situation at Red Bull, given whatever's happened behind the scenes, the power struggles that we are seeing unfold. I just can't imagine that Horner stays in that role going forwards and is now all of a sudden and buddy buddy again with Marco and Jos Verstappen and even Max and we'll get to that in a second. And whether this is even some sort of like a straw that broke the camel's back type situation when certain individuals behind the scenes at Red Bull might have wanted Horner gone for some time and now all of a sudden there's this you know controlling behavior investigation that they might be able to use to get rid of him effectively from the team. So Helmut Marco we mentioned this quote yesterday who absolutely loves to talk about whatever you want to put a microphone in front of his mouth to say and he finally learned and how to say no comment yesterday when discussing the Horner allegations. He was then asked, actually, and we'll see this full article here in a second, by the journalist that put this together. Helmut Marko continues to refuse to talk to me about the topic. Only when I asked him whether he wasn't actually behind a conspiracy against Horner did he say, Horner has done a great job over the years. So this is just unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. It actually makes a fair bit of sense. But Marko refuses to comment on everything that you ask him. But as soon as you say, look, Marko, are you the man behind all this drama? You know, did you come up with this whole theory? Marco doesn't deny that. And he just says, he actually decides to comment and says, Horner has done a great job over the years. Which firstly kind of implies that maybe he wants Horner to know that, yeah, it was me pulling the strings. But also doesn't deny that. Then goes on to say, he's done a great job. 
kind of talking in the past tense, right? It's almost like he's saying, well, you know, Horner's done a great job. Maybe it's time to move on in a different direction. But still, we don't exactly know why. I mean, we've heard the rumors as to Marco versus Horner power struggle, but apparently there's more to it than just that. So this is a motorsports article today here on the German side, written by the journalist we just mentioned here, Christian Nimavol, as you guys can see. And once again, it's a breakdown of what's happened here at the start over the last few days. But as it goes on to say, according to information of a motorsporttotal.com the fact that Horner's future will be decided on Friday is not yet a guarantee apparently there'll be a hearing on Friday where he will talk to the lawyer or whatever the case is and therefore they will then have to go through further processes but they launch their car like next week so I'm sure they'll want to bring it to a close there's also talk that he's having a hearing on Friday Friday can quite often be a day when if someone's going to get fired or let go or whatever kind of tends to be done on Friday. So there's just that at least to keep in mind. But time is of the essence. Of course, they launched their presentation on the 15th. So, you know, is Horner going to be there as the team boss or is he not? I mean, it's going to be kind of awkward, I imagine, if he is. They're professionals at the end of the day. But yeah, this would be interesting. So Horner was, again, more reporting that he has been advised to resign from his post. But he says he denies the allegations. He apparently refuses to resign. Even Bernie Eccleston, who somehow has got involved in this situation again, former F1 boss Bernie is now said to be playing a role behind the scenes. As is well known, Horner is Eccleston's best man and their personal relationship between the two remains good. Eccleston, we hear from inside the circles, is trying to have a calming effect on Horner to say, oh, you know, you've done well, Christian, it's time to move on. But he refuses to resign. So maybe, I don't know, Bernie's given him the advice to resign or exactly what's happened here. But that's one thing we haven't heard before. This is, though, another thing we haven't heard before on the whole Verstappen angle on this. It's been very clear, even when the Marco versus Horner rumors were going around last year that there was a power struggle at Red Bull after Mateschitz's passing, Verstappen Jr., as we'll call him here, came up publicly and said, Marco, if he leaves, I'm gone as well. So definitely committing his loyalty, Max Verstappen, to Helmut Marco and what he's done for his respective career. It feels to me, and it feels to the article, like Jos Verstappen is in a similar boat. By the way, the fact that this story first leaked in the Netherlands, let's not forget Eric Van Haren, I believe, was the first to break this story, who, well, isn't really a Red Bull man, he's a Verstappen man, really, and he's got the insider situation on that camp, so... As I said at the time, there's probably something to that. Probably no coincidence. Behind the scenes in Formula 1, there are whispers that the personal relationship between Horner and Jos Verstappen is badly damaged. And Verstappen Jr. is considered a loyal person, whose loyalty, however, lies primarily with two men, his father, of course, and Helmut Marko. So the article then kind of goes on to describe the concerns of Red Bull if, you know, there's proven misconduct or whatever. And, you know, you can argue that maybe there has been misconduct, and I guess we'll see over the coming days. But whatever the case is, it feels like like there's an internal coup at Red Bull to try and get rid of Horner potentially led by Marco, potentially led by Jos Verstappen. So Jos Verstappen, of course, is a highly controversial character within the motorsport and the Formula 1 landscape. There's arguments that people have said for some time that Max, after, you know, we know the stories of Jos and what he did to Max when he was a kid, all this other stuff, that Max would just kick his dad out and everything, but, like, that's not going to happen. The relationship between those two is obviously very close. And Jos has said some very questionable things even over the years. Like, I remember whenever Max doesn't win a race and Perez does... He's always talking about, oh, you know, Horner, you should have, you know, prioritized the number one driver. And it's like, Max could win 19 of 22 races, and yet Yoss is still complaining about, um, oh, the team didn't favor the number one man enough, and all this stuff of stuff. He usually talks to the media about this. And maybe, you know, maybe that happens, right? A father of a son, and he's driving in Formula One, and people would argue that Yoss is kind of living vicariously through Max, as it were, because his own F1 career was nothing to the level that his son Max has achieved. But whatever's going on there behind the scenes, clearly, Jos is heavily involved in the Verstappen camp still. I mean, he is a Verstappen. And of course, Max is now the main man at Red Bull. The team has been, in some senses, built around him over the last few years. And now Max has so much power within Red Bull, right? He doesn't exactly call the shots, but he isn't too far off doing exactly that. It's his team in many respects. And if his father wants Horner gone for whatever reason... 
and Max agrees and has more loyalty to his father and Marco agrees, then they will probably find a way to get Horner gone. Whether this is like, as I say, the, the straw that broke the camel's back or whatever they say on they've wanted Horner gone for some time and Manashitz's passing allowed some sort of internal power struggle to occur and now something has happened, whether this has actually happened, whether it's been planted or whatever you guys want to believe and now Horner might be on his way out. But it just seems like if this is true, which might not be, but if this is true, then I just don't see a world in which Horner can stay as the team principal, regardless of whether he's actually guilty or not in this particular case, right? So what do you guys think about this? And also, what does it mean for the future of Red Bull as well? If the Verstappens are taken over, as it were, if Marco's involved in this whole arrangement, because again, I'll just share the quote from Marco, Horner has done a great job over the years, kind of saying like, yeah, well done, well done, Christian, but we're now going to move on in a different direction and we're going to take charge in a different way. Absolutely fascinating. Very much into it. your thoughts in the comment section below. By Friday, we should have some serious more information as to whether Horner is going to stay or go, I would well imagine. Just a couple of quick things to mention before we close out here. So I mentioned yesterday, they've changed around the format of the race weekend on a sprint weekend. So it now goes practice one on Friday, then sprint qualifying on Friday, basically second thing on Friday. Saturday is the sprint itself, and then Grand Prix qualifying on Saturday afternoon, and then the Grand Prix itself on Sunday. That I think is better. There's pros and then cons. We discussed those yesterday. But for sure, what needs to happen if this is to be better is after the sprint on Saturday morning, they reopen Park Ferme so the teams can make setup adjustments going into Grand Prix qualifying and going into the race on Sunday. I think that would actually be a really good change that would massively make the weekends far more interesting than the sprints currently are. Now, apparently, though, this isn't a done deal. I thought this would be a no-brainer, to be honest. I think lots of you guys probably agree with me on that one. Apparently, though, they will have a conversation about this at the F1 Commission meeting on Friday, along with the Horner stuff. But, of course, they'll be going on separately, I imagine, but both on Friday. So they'll discuss having two park fermes, which to me is, like, such a no-brainer that they should do it guaranteed. But I'm sure they'll have the conversation and hopefully they will be able to make that change as requested. And just one final thing on the Hamilton Ferrari stuff. It's still such a wild timeline. But actually, Zhou Guan Yu was one of the only men on the planet that knew that Hamilton was going to Ferrari before anybody else did. And it seems like Zhou, who's um, you know, a pretty unassuming guy, he's only been in the sport for a couple of years, knew way before the Mercedes team did. So Mark Hines, who's recently come back to work with Hamilton, just a few days actually, that was confirmed before he went to join Ferrari. I know Mark, who is Hamilton's like management together with myself I texted him before it so I knew that he was signing it was a fact I didn't tell anyone but I was really shocked by the news it was very unexpected most likely I was not expecting Lewis to retire as a Ferrari driver but just pretty funny right that it seems like Joe somehow not exactly somehow he explains but he had knowledge of the Hamilton Ferrari move way before anybody else seemed to and even before you know the other drivers and even Hamilton's own team so very much intrigued to your thoughts though in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always I really appreciate the support over the last few days as well the channel's been popping off and I think for good reason it's been absolutely madness happening take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time